So we've talked about the need for a pre-qualification letter and why it's in your best interest to be fully equipped and prepared before starting to look at homes. Next, we're going to highlight five things that you need to do in order to get your pre-qualification letter. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Kelly Nitz of the Kelly Nitz team. Thanks for joining me today. There are five important things you need to be aware of and be prepared for when you go to get your loan prequalification. A mortgage prequalification could be useful as an estimate as to how much you can afford to spend on your home. And the final loan approval occurs when the appraisal is done and a loan is attached to a particular property. So once you get an accepted offer, then um, that's when the final loan approval starts its process. And here are five things you'll need to provide your lender in order to begin the pre-qualification process. First, you're gonna need proof of income. So be prepared because you will have to provide them with at least two years worth of tax returns, maybe three, depending on what time of year it is and what that particular lender re requests. Um, other income you might have to prove would be alimony, child support, any bonuses that you may have had, any overtime, those types of things, and your uh, most recent pay stubs also they're going to be asking for. So they want to verify your and have proof of income. Secondly, they're going to need proof of assets. They want to know where your down payment money is coming from. So you'll need to provide the bank with statements like from your 401k or a mutual fund or your savings account or Wherever your down payment money is coming from, they'll want documentation as to where it came from. If you're receiving a gift from a friend or a gift letter, it cannot be stated as a loan. It must be a gift. So be prepared to sign a gift letter if you're getting your cash down payment money from a gift from a friend or a relative. Third, you're going to need documentation. Your lender is going to need a copy of your driver's license and your social security number so that they can pull your credit report. Be prepared at the pre-qualification session to provide that as quickly as possible or any other additional paperwork requested by the lender. And the more cooperative you are and the quicker you get the information to your lender, the smoother the mortgage process will be. Um, fourth, you have to have good credit. And most lenders today reserve the lowest interest rate for the people with the best credit, like of 740 or above, you'll get the best rate if you have a credit rating of above 740. Um, most lenders require a credit score of 620 above for FHA type loans or VA. Um, talk to your lender about that, but that's an approximation of about what they'll expect for your credit to be if you're pursuing that type of loan. Um, if you have a really low or moderately low credit score, we, they can even suggest things to help you through that process. Maybe you might not be able to buy a house today, but they can set you up on a plan to improve your credit so that you are able to buy a home. So meeting with a loan officer is, is beneficial not only to get pre-qualified for the loan and you have, that you have for the house that you have picked out, but for planning on what you need to do in order to qualify for a loan if your ducks aren't in a row today. And finally, number five, employment and landlord verification. Landlord verification, it's kind of important for you to know to stay at good, on good terms with your landlord so that when the bank does call them to verify you've been making your payments on time, they'll say nice things about you and, and say yes, you've been in good standing with them. So make sure you're not at odds with your landlord. And as far as your employment verification, your lender will not only want to see pay stubs, but also it's likely they're going to call your employer and check on your employment and check on your salary. And if you've recently changed jobs, they may call your previous employer, um, only to make sure that you're a good stable borrower in the same field and um, have good stable employment. Um, Self-employed borrowers will need to provide a significant amount of additional paperwork concerning their business and income. It's much more difficult to get the loan if you're self-employed. Once you've gathered all the required documentation, it's time to start looking and shopping for a loan officer to get the best rate available in the area. It's important because rates fluctuate sometimes twice daily to talk to each lender within the hour so that you're comparing apples to apples. 
I'd like to thank you for allowing me to share this information with you, and hopefully you found it to be useful and helpful. Um, click the like button if you liked it, and if you want to continue to watch and get notices of other videos coming up, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks again.